What is going on everybody? This is Arcade15 bringing you a review of the Razer Tiamat 7.1 surround sound gaming headset. Alright, so before we get to the bad, uh, let's talk about some of the good things because honestly, I was ready to just straight up return these uh, within 30 minutes of getting them. Um, but I wanted to share with you guys my experience so maybe you could avoid making a similar mistake. So the good things, uh, the aesthetics are really nice. You've got um, these really cool translucent ear cups. You also have solid ones that are the same color as the ear cups that clip into these magnetic holes here to cover them up if you don't want it to be so easily scratched. Um, really cool lighted accents. Uh, some of the touches here are really nice, the stitching on the headband. Um, and overall, actually, the comfort is really good on these headphones. It's one of the few redeeming things about it. Um, they're not as good as my Bayer Dynamic headphones because they're actually smaller, so they don't distribute the pressure around your ears as well as some of the larger uh, studio headphones for music production, etc. Now, I know these are for gaming, but I think Razer could have gone with the style of the Megalodon uh, ear cups where they're more circular and distribute the pressure much nicer around your ears. These actually aren't as comfortable as the Megalodons, but they're they're not bad. They're certainly better than uh, than most headphones. And because all the electronics uh, are here, they're fairly light, which means uh, they don't put a lot of pressure on your head, and, and you can wear them for a fairly extended time. Uh, the cord here isn't detachable, so when if and when they short out, um, you have to buy new headphones, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, especially given the fact they have the separate unit for handling um, volume settings and switching between 7.1 surround sound and 2.0. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to not have it be detachable so you could plug in different headphones or what have you, but that's another drawback. Um, before we get to the to, this, to the unit that uh, dictates uh, volume control, etc. One thing I wanted to talk about are these hinges. Now, they are extremely thin. Hopefully you guys can see it. Very... And the first thing I noticed when I took these out of the packaging is it would not take a lot to break that hinge. I'm pretty sure a drop from a desk height uh, would do it. Uh, and, and I kind of feel the same way right here. These just don't feel as well uh, put together as, as the Megalodons did or the Krakens or any other Razer headset I've owned, really. Um, so you have this unit over here, which uh, looks all right in terms of aesthetics. They have some nice accents. Um, this is probably the nicest part of it. It's like an all-metal volume knob, and you can push it to mute and uh, switch between 7.1 surround sound and, and 2.1. Now you do have to have a, a, a sound card that does support it. I have a um, THX, uh, I think it's a Recon 3DI in, in this Alienware, and it, that works pretty well. Um, and the other thing that you guys should know on this unit is, let me see if I can show it to you, is uh, some of the critical features, like uh, over here where you switch between... Uh, uh, you know, adjust channel volumes, the sub volume, the mic volume, those aren't actually lighted. Those are just painted on. And that was one of the first things I, I noticed after I plugged it in is I thought they were supposed to light up and I thought it was broken, but they don't light up. There's a little painted thing here that indicates uh, which setting you're in. So it just feels left and right here that they're just cutting corners and we haven't even gotten to the sound quality. Um, but it's not the worst thing. It's it's really convenient being able to adjust these settings. Uh, but if you're in a dark gaming environment, most of us like to turn on the lights a little bit so we can immerse ourselves in the games that we play. You can't tell where this is, which is just a complete oversight. Uh, you have the mic mute over here. Uh, I forgot to mention that you do have an extendable mic here. It sounds on par with the Megalodon, which is good. It extends out of the left ear cup, and then you can see again, it just, you hear how it clicks into place? It, it sounds incredibly cheap. It just sounds like you break it every time you do it. It's just uh, 
Once again, something I really don't like, given the fact that these are $160, $170, and they act, that's actually after they came down a bit in price. People were, uh, when Razer was un unable to meet the demand in the beginning, people were selling them for $300 or whatever, and I am really glad I didn't pay that, because these are certainly not worth that. So, perhaps now the most important part of the review is... Uh, is the audio quality and this is where I just almost threw up. It's the only way I can describe on both 2.1 and 7.1 surround. I tried music, I tried games, I tried a whole lot of things, tried um, playing with the equalizer on my on my sound card and uh, bouncing between surround sounds modes and, and stereo modes. There is nothing you can do to make these sound good. Honestly, the way I can compare the sound to in a way that most people can probably instantly relate is they sound almost exactly actually like the free or I guess now $2 headphones you get uh, on an airline. It's really that bad and I, I really wish I could say I was exaggerating because I love Razer products obviously. It's very rare that I've been disappointed. Uh, I mean I haven't liked the Mamba in the past but that was mostly a personal choice because I don't like wireless mice. But it's it's really amazing to me that Razer came with such a bad product. The hinges feel like they're going to break, you know, with the first drop from a desk. The little things like the microphone feeling like it breaks every time you take it out are just not good. The fact that this here isn't actually lighted, and there's some pretty important things here like mic volume and, and the sub volume and things you'd really like to be able to see in the dark, and you can't see them. Um... The fact that, you know, this cable here still isn't detachable, which is one of my complaints in the Megalodon, and I think most people's complaints, uh, it just doesn't make sense to me. And of course, the awful audio quality, it just sounds like airline headphones. In 7.1 surround sound, it sounds muddy, uh, despite having five speakers in each ear cup, or five drivers, it's just muddy, and the, the, uh, you never feel like, um, you never feel like it's it's immersive. It always sounds like you're listening through something that's muffling. It sounds like you got a towel covering the ear cups, and uh, and you're listening through that or something like that. And even in two point one sound in music, it's just there's no redeeming area where these shine. The mids aren't clear. The highs aren't. Uh, you know, they're drowned out by a really muddy bass, and it's not like a booming bass or a strong bass. It's just a bad one. Um, and again, like if you've listened to beats, at least those have really, you know, good bass and you can enjoy, uh, you know, bass heavy music, even though they're not the best headphones out there by a long shot, but these are, you know, a million times worse even than those. It's really hard to recommend these to anybody. The only thing I can really do is recommend you run in the opposite direction. Uh, I don't think even if someone offered me these for $20 or $10, I would buy them. That's how bad it is. And again, I love Razer products. I didn't want to do this review. I was ready to just send send them back in the box. But I figured I'm not much of a reviewer if I don't give you guys my opinion when something is really a bad product. Um, so again, they did some things right with the comfort. The design is cool. But there are just some really glaring flaws that make this a product I can't recommend. And... Uh, Hopefully you guys can, you know, pick something else from Razer's lineup or maybe go with Steel Series and uh, come back to Razer for a premium headset when they redo this because this is just an absolute failure on their part. Well, I hope that helped you guys uh, and have a good one.